Hey guys, it's Heyo here. Welcome to another Beyond All Reason replay analysis. Uh, today we're going to be looking at this 2v2 from Frogalicious. Uh, this is played on Tangerine, which is generally a 1v1 or 2v2 map. Um, and first off, before we even get started, um, some of the things that you might want to look for anytime you're playing um, either on a, a map you're unfamiliar with, or maybe you want to just get a better sense of how to play on a certain map. Uh, just take a look at the terrain. Take a look at like the the resources and the choke points and all that. You know things like um, you know on this map in particular, you want to make notes that this is a rather narrow uh, corridor to your opponent, and there's two of them, and they're in the dead center of the map. Uh, so generally speaking, you know one of the players will defend one one of the sides, and then the other player will defend the other side. Um, other things to look out for is um, you know, things like these beachheads, you want to know, is it possible for amphibious units to get in your base? Is it going to be easy for them to do that? Is it going to be harder? Um, and, you know, kind of plan, you know, a, a sort of defense. Um, at the very least, you want to have radar. Um, but radar doesn't really help you against amphibious units that go on the bottom of the water, right? So you might even want to uh, put your commander or an amphibious constructor in the water to place a radar because the the water radar units um, can also like they also have sonar so they can see stuff underwater uh, so just to make note of the paths here you know you got um, in the center here you or you know on the sides here you have these these uh, um, ways for those amphibious units to get up or down uh, you also have um, a way for them to do that in this very center of the map and then you even have this beachhead in the back here uh, to watch out for it so make note of all that stuff because you know amphibious play can come uh can be a thing on this map um, the other thing to make note of is uh, where are the mexes and how big are the mexes how many are, of them are there um, on this map in particular there isn't a mex in the middle to fight for um, so having the middle here is purely for you know for more of like it's in the middle and it's you know narrow choke it's good to have it for that reason but there's no mexes to like build on the way up there so it that makes it kind of interesting in, in a way um, in fact a lot of the metal nodes are in the back here which makes them more defensible if you're able to control that choke um, also note that there are some water mexes you know in the back here there's one on the side here there's uh, some in the middle there's a little bit of reclaim you want to take a look at the rock reclaim um, any rocks like towards the center of the map that are more contested that you know either you or your opponents can get uh, you want to fight for it because um, you know reclaiming 100 metal in the center of the map isn't just you gaining 100 metal it's also denying them 100 metal so the difference is actually 200 metal you know so if there's like you know so like bits of like 200 metal here 200 metal there you know, trying to get as much of that as you can to deny your opponent from having those. Um, now, these are in the water, so, you know, generally speaking, not a lot of people will actually fight for these. Um, but it, it, you know, it, there's enough here that, you know, it would make sense to, to move a, um, a um, you know, either a commander or an amphibious constructor out there to grab it. Um, and then while they're out there, they can also grab these mexes for a bit of an extra metal income. Um, but yeah, there isn't any like large metal spots or anything like that. Um, we also want to look at geos. On this map, I see that there's a geo here, there's a geo back here, there's a geo here, and then there's also a geo on this left-hand side for blue. Uh, you know, so those come into play as well because geos are the most efficient way to get energy, especially in the T2 phase. Um, now on this map. You know, you want to make note of the wind speed as well. Like uh, the the minimum is five, the maximum is 25, and the average is 18.8. Um, so generally speaking, you know, this is a a lot of winds. It's going to be way better to do winds than it is to do solar. Um, where uh, on maps where winds is less, like say it's like say zero to 15, um, then it makes sense to maybe start with the solar or have a solar or two to just um, like smooth out the wind so that if it dips super low, you have something to fall back on. Um, but I also want to point out that basic solars are very inefficient. They cost about 
um, 150 metal um, compared to winds that you know for cortex it costs 45 per wind turbine uh, for arm it's 37 um, but it's like significantly less less um, you know metal for those but it's again usually pretty dynamic so um, it's kind of nice to have something to smooth it out um, the geos of course are, are you know you can get a geo to help smooth it out, out as well um, tides uh, tides are generally more efficient than solar um, solars are basically the the least efficient way to get energy um, generally speaking there are a couple of exceptions where tide the tide value here is 20 but you know sometimes it's super low like 10 in which case um, a solar is reasonable um, at that time um, but yeah just like ways to smooth out the winds uh, if you're trying to do pure winds you can smooth it out by having uh, like some energy storage so that when it dips down you kind of have a, a bank of energy to, to utilize for that um, here since the wind is minimum five it's like solar's not a great option here um, if you are going to do a solar I'll, i wouldn't do any more than one and that would really only be to help smooth out um, you know how dynamic the wind is and i'll try to replace that with just having extra winds by having a storage um, and eventually the geo um, and or maybe having a tide or two um, but yeah wind here is is very very good so you can rely on that a bit more um, there's also a lot of tree reclaim that you can get to kind of boost your early economy going on or going <laughs> um, but the trees do run out and you you don't want to rely on them for the long term but early on they're a good way to uh, get enough energy to just like boost out a lot of units or boost out your constructors to um, you know just basically uh, you know start building a bunch of stuff um, you don't have to worry about as about energy as much there um, let's see is there anything else that I have missed um, I don't think so. So yeah, let's get into this game. Um, and I'll start pointing out some stuff as I see them. Uh, so right away here, um, I see that you're grabbing this node first, and then you're walking back here to grab this second uh, metal extractor node. Um, and then, you know, that basically means that anything they build afterwards is gonna be around that location, right? Because you don't really wanna walk your commander and waste time before building all that stuff. Um, so I would actually recommend grabbing this node first and this node second, which would put your buildings more in this area here, uh, which is just a little bit closer to that choke point. You know, because it, it's um, going to be very important to try to grab that choke point so that it's harder for the enemy to slip scouts in and do a bunch of damage in the back here. Uh, so that should be kind of your goal to, to take this choke point at some point as early as you can ideally um, the next thing I want to point out here is that you are building three solars um, even if it's a um, like even if the the wind is is less you can actually build only two solars before the lab and then just build some more energy on afterwards um, here because the wind is so good you actually don't want these solars at all um, you know wind is maxed right now at 25 um, I guess just to say a little bit more about that uh, so solars produce 20 energy wind turbines produce whatever this value is um, so one wind turbine right now is basically the same as one solar uh, if we look at the cost um, one solar collector is 150 metal and only 45 uh, metal for the wind turbine for cortex um, so you can get the same value for a third of the cost essentially um, so wind turbines are going to be awesome here. So don't don't build these. If wind was at its lowest point, it maybe makes sense to build one and then build wind. But you know, generally speaking, you want to just build wind. Um, all right, so you got that going on. You got your commander coming, doing some light laser tower. I think you have a radar here as well, and you have a constructor coming out. So that's pretty normal kind of stuff uh, radar of course I, I would actually say the radar could be first because as you can see this scout is still coming over here um, so you, you would have time to do both and the radar itself will give you an idea of where the scout is going and if you start producing a unit or something you can 
respond to that a lot easier. Um, but yeah, tower is fine too. It's it's just um, there are ways for scouts to still do damage. Like a scout could potentially come back here and park in this spot, like right here, and this this um, solar collector or the the metal extractor. Um, they're kind of shorter compared to like things like wind turbines, but they still block for ticks because ticks are very very small. Um, you know, so things like the commander and this turret here might not be able to fire on a tick that's sitting right in that spot. And so that tick could actually just destroy a bunch of stuff here. And the commander would have to respond by moving all the way around to, to greet it. So there's still ways in, even though you have a tower. Um, so just be careful of that. That's why, you know, it's so important to... Um, like, that's why it's good to have a unit out. Um, looks like that first, first guy got killed off, though. So that's great. A um, little bit of idle time for your commander. Could be, yeah, I'd say he could be boosting. Um, one thing I want to point out here is uh, vehicles are a little bit more metal heavy to produce. Uh, not the lab itself. The lab itself is just a little bit more expensive. Um, but like, um, now ba basically, if you start with two mexes and you go vehicle, it's like your metal is going to drain very quickly. And it's going to drain especially quickly because you have these solar collectors. Um, so usually if you are going vehicle, you want to grab uh, three, me three mexes ASAP uh, before doing the lab. Um, there's a technical way to like grab this mex as well by placing like, you know, you grab the mex, you get a solar collector or wind turbine, and then you get a, a light laser tower, and then move your commander up here to grab these two mexes and then finish building the rest of your stuff here. Um, but yeah, that is a little bit more comp complex, and so you don't really need to do that at this level of play. I wouldn't really worry about it. Um, but as it is, uh, you have only six metal income, and producing out of this, this lab is already 3.5, uh, just from the lab itself, and then if you boost it with your commander, it's, a, you know, your commander is going to try to use up to 10 here. Uh, so you don't actually have the income, nor the metal storage, or I should say, nor the metal banks to really utilize the, um, you know, all that build power. Uh, so instead what you could do, um, especially since you have this tower here to defend this whole area here, you can move your commander down here, grab this max, move him up here, grab this max, and that whole time, because of the commander's range, you're actually still protected along this entire avenue. Um, you know, and then after that metal extractor, you, you could, if you wanted to, you could put a, a light laser tower down and then walk back to assist the lab with. And that'll just help you get some more stuff going on faster. Um, and then your your constructor could just come right back down here and start grabbing these mexes, right? Um, in fact, you could even have a second constructor doing that. Uh, but if you did it that way, you kind of need somebody to start producing some energy as you grab more mexes too. Um, but yeah, that's... I'm trying not to go like too crazy into details because I don't want the video to go super, super long, but... Uh, let's see. Let's take a look at what you're doing here. All right, so your, your constructor's grabbing the mexes. No, he's just starting with that one and moving moving along. Uh, commander's still assisting. Um, it's like okay, so you realize that you need the metal, and assisting's not really have you know not really doing much for you. So you're coming over here to assist that max. Um, and your commander. Okay, so your commander's just guarding this guy, and this guy's gonna build a bunch of mexes back here. So this to me is not great. Because your commander himself, like he has a lot of hit points, he's rather tanky. He has uh, a reasonable, you know, some good DPS. He has D gun. Uh, he's great offensively, so he's very good early to send him forward to secure lands. Now, usually on a lot of maps, um, sending them forward means there's like metal nodes to capture along the way. You know, so maybe instead of going directly to center, you, you do something like, you know, come over here, grab this node, come over here, grab this node, and then just walk forward from there. And then, you know, you can set up your defensive line and radar and all that up here. Um, but on this map, there's no metal nodes, so that's not really a great option if you're so low on metal, right? Um, so alternatively, what you could do is use them more for build power. 
Um, you could use them to assist the lab, add on some energy. Um, like I was saying before, these two metal nodes are pretty close to you, like to your base. Um, so it's really not too far of a walk. Um, but the fact of the matter is, um, having your commander guard this guy building all these mexes is a lot of time for, like, it's just a lot of walking around. You know, so, and it's walking around in the back. So, A, you're not really taking advantage of the fact that he has a lot of hit points and, you know, can degun and all that, like, on the fronts if need be. Um, you're not taking advantage of the fact that he has 300 build power, which is an insane amount at this, uh, you know, this early on. Um, so it's just, like, kind of wasting that in a way. Um, so, yeah, you could be doing things more in this region. Um you know, while your constructor grabs some other other nodes. Uh, let's see, what does this constructor do? Okay, so this constructor is setting up defenses. This is another thing I want to I want to talk about a bit. So, this constructor is basically defending. You know, setting up defenses def to defend this location, which basically like the end of the ranges will be something like this. Um, you know, so that means enemies can still slip through here. They might see all these defenses and say, oh, okay, I'm just going to go over here to, to uh, my ally then. And now your ally is getting 2v1. Um, so essentially, these defenses in this location, um, you know, sets the front line to here. And, um, you know, it's kind of a wide area. You kind of need to put a lot of defenses up to, like, hold the entire thing. When ideally, because this is such a narrow choke, you know, instead of putting four towers back here, you could just put one. And that defends against all scouts, basically. Um, and then as the game progresses and have your units come out, you might want, you know, maybe two or three or, or whatever. Or maybe you don't even set it up right here. Maybe you just get one initially here and push the line of skirmish up here. You know, and that way it's further away from you. You have more time to react to things coming at you. Um, you can put a radar up here to, to see, like, all the way up here. And then you have a good sense of, you know, even parts of your opponent's base because of how tiny this map is. Um, yeah, so this is just a lot of wasted money uh, to defend this large area when you could just be defending this narrower choke, essentially. Yeah, so this is just a lot of walk-in. Okay, incisor, that's great. So what do you produce next? Speed up a little bit. Okay, so this is a bit of idle time. Um, to some degree, it's fine because in a way you're saying, okay, instead of building units right now, I'm spending my resources on getting these mechs faster. You know, and since you don't have a lot of metal, like that's totally fine. Um, just know that it, you know, it's going to make you a little bit weak at first, but that does mean that these will go up a little bit faster for it. All right, so now you are producing medium tanks. All right, so the incisor I like. Uh, so incisors are, are, you know, like medium tanks are basically, like they're pretty fast, but things like incisors and blitzes are faster. And even faster than that are scouts. Um, medium tanks also have a plasma attack. Whoops. They have a plasma attack and incisors have a laser. Uh, plasma walls, uh, they travel slower, uh, generally speaking. Um, you know, so things that are moving quickly, it's hard for those the plasma to connect with it because they'll just like miss the shot. Whereas a laser has a much higher chance to like you know hit the enemy. Um, so what that basically means is things like incisors, um, a because they're faster, and b because they're a laser. Um, you know, their projectiles rather quick. They can kill things like scouts much easier than something like a medium tank who is much slower than a scout and has plasma attack that you know that travels in the air kind of slowly and then finally lands and then it just like misses and it's like oh gosh the scout's still running around um so i would recommend here um to just get a, a couple more incisors um like so medium tanks are like overall a better choice for battling for sure um, and since this is so narrow, just parking a few tanks basically means that, you know, you're going to be able to defend everything. 
um, you know, they're they're a better choice in narrow spots because there's no space for the enemy to like run around them as much. Um, but at the same time, you have a scout back here somewhere still. I saw him running around just a little bit ago. Um, and any new scouts that try to get through um, you know, are, are going to be taken out a lot easier by things like incisors. Um, alternatively, if you had that laser tower, the laser tower would do all that up here too. Uh, you know, lasers, again, being pretty good against faster units. Um, so there's that. All right, so you're parking the medium tanks up at the fronts. Uh, let's see, where is your... Okay, so you have your... your incisor guarding this this uh, constructor which is great uh, the only problem with that is is you don't really know if that scout's going to attack the constructor so in a way these are all somewhat unsafe at the moment and so it'd be a little bit more beneficial um, to try to keep an eye on where the scout is uh, you kind of have this nice natural blockage here so you kind of know, you know, and with your radar, you kind of know whether or not he's on this side of your territory or this side. Um, now, given that, you know, the radar extends all the way down here, there isn't as much of a chance for the scout to be down here somewhere. So he's probably in this location. Um, so you just want to be very mindful of that and possibly even put down a radar to, like, see further, see where it is and chase it down with the, the uh, incisor. And then since you have your tanks up here, you don't really need to have um, your incisor in the back here anymore. Um, also note here, since you have started grabbing more mexes, you haven't really added on more energy. And a lot of things require energy to do what they do. Um, for example, light laser towers, they take 20 energy per shot. So the fact that you're out of energy means that these light laser towers will not fire whatsoever. They're just completely dead weight until you get enough energy back. Um, same thing with the commander. The commander's D-gun takes energy. Uh, the cloaking and stuff, if you use that, that takes energy as well. Um, its basic attack does not, um, but you do see the uh, little like red lightning bolts above when you're out of energy uh, because of the D-gun uh, thing. Uh, mexes, by the way, this is the bigger thing, is mexes require energy to produce uh, metal. Uh, oh yeah, currently it's this one's not using it because it's it's out, you're out of energy. Uh, but if we click on this one that is still producing, we see that it's minus three energy and plus 1.8 metal. This is a 1.8 node, so that's where that 1.8 comes from. Uh, but all mexes take three energy, or I should say, all T1 mexes take three energy. Uh, T2 mechs, by the way, just, you know, they take 20, so it's significantly more. Um, but either way, being out of energy is a big deal, and you want to rectify that ASAP. Um, since your commander's still back at, at base, back at home, um, it would be very beneficial to add on some, some more wind turbines. Um, and in fact, um, as you build more metal extractors, uh, if you're... You know, if you become used to like the ebb and flow of bar, uh, basically, you know, it's like you add on more metal extractors, so now you have more metal to work with, which means your energy starts depleting faster. And so it's like you can kind of anticipate like, oh, my constructor is about to grab these these nodes here. Let me add on, you know, like six more wind or or whatever the heck, you know, you choose to do in terms of energy. Um, or, you know, you can have your commander do it as well. Uh, but like anticipating it is is really good. Um, a lot of people will advocate for just like for just building a, a constant amount of wind. Um, but honestly, like the if you overspend building energy, that means you know like they all do take metal to build. So like you're you're uh, basically going to have less units for it. And in fact, a lot of really really good strong players. Um, are very careful not to overbuild energy because that means just having less units. Uh, one of the things that I'd like to see maybe, um, again, you know, I, I guess just to reiterate about all these defenses here, they're kind of unnecessary and could just be up here. Because um, once that's, that, that's secure, then all this doesn't need to be here. 
Um, so you could actually do this a lot sooner. Uh, but yeah, moving your constructor up here to build these defenses, building radar, um, you know, basically pushes that line of skirmish up so that you have more room to work with. You know, even though there's no maxes here, it's still a very good idea. Um, and I see that you're doing that, you're just kind of doing it slower than than what you could be doing. So I just wanted to, to really hammer that in because it is kind of a big deal. Um, it's like Blue kind of has the right idea here. With that, he has this radar, and this radar actually pierces into the enemy base. So now you kind of have an idea of what's going on. Um, and you want to definitely make note of where the enemy dots are, how many they, there is, and you know, kind of try to figure out: are those units? Are they towers? Are they, you know, um, defensive structures? This was good by you. You poked in here. You saw a commander. Commanders do really well against medium tanks, so you want to watch out for that. Uh, and that's mainly because medium tanks, um, you know, they, they don't turn around very quickly. So, like, trying to engage a commander, it's very easy for them to get degunned. Uh, so it's good that you got out of there. Uh, potentially, you know, knowing that the commander's on this side of the of the, uh, the choke here, you could send units this way to do some harassment. Um, but considering this is all that you have, uh, you know, it's, it's fine that you're not. But it is very good that you're poking to see what's there. So you have a sense of three towers there and a commander. You don't know what else, but you know at least that there's that. So that's good. Um, throughout the match, that's going to become more and more important. So just get a sense of what what's going on. Um, and at this point, because you don't have a radar up here, you know your radar, your team's radar ends here. So you actually have no idea just how many dots there are. And this is probably the biggest thing I think um, to work on for you is just like uh, basically doing more things like poking to see um, to see what's there because that'll give you a lot of information. Um, so essentially, oh, okay, so I missed it, but yeah, basically the tick ran around. Uh, I believe it was probably stationed out here somewhere and just like decided to run through here to kill all these mexes. Um, I know either way you lost a bunch of mexes and that's kind of a big deal because you don't have a lot of mexes besides the ones that you just lost. Uh, so it's going to be crucial to rebuild that stuff ASAP. Um, you know, so it's good that you still have their, your constructor as you're grabbing these mexes. I would say even uh, maybe even sends another constructor to grab these mexes back ASAP. Um, and after you grab your land of mexes, you can consider building the muskrat. Uh, now the muskrat costs a little bit more for a little bit less build power, but it's amphibious. Um, so what that means is you can actually grab these these water nodes. Um, I mean, it's not like a ton of water nodes, but but having like a few more mechs nodes than your opponent is kind of a big deal. Um, you know, that just means you can field more units, and a few more units can actually make a big difference. Um, anyways, back to my thought up here on the front. Um, I guess I'll wait for this radar to get done. In fact, let's speed it up a little bit. Okay, so the radar's done, you see some dots. And it looks intimidating because there's a lot of dots, and you don't know what they are. You know, for all you know, like, the only thing that you do know for sure is that there's three towers here. Um, and if there's units in front of the towers, they're probably military units. They're probably, you know, they're, they're not, you, they're not going to put like a bunch of wind turbines right there. Right. Um, but what you don't know is what these are. They could be defensive structures. They could be more units. They could be energy producing units or I mean structures. Um, and so it's, it's good to poke that at that stuff. Um, and so ideally knowing that there's towers there. Um, you know, you want to get maybe some Wolverines, uh, and it looks like you're you're starting to add some to your queue. Um, but yeah, just to be able to chisel away at these defensive structures, um, and then you can even continue to poke with your medium tanks. And if you had uh, a little bit more build power up here, um, you could repair these tanks as well, so that they could continue to poke and just fall back. Um, without that repair. You're basically going to just keep taking damage and then eventually lose some tanks. So uh, repair is very good. Um, repair is free, by the way. 
completely and utterly free. So it's a, it's a good way to get more value out of what you have. Alright, so you got some more medium tanks. So you did that initial poke. Um, it would be really good if you just kept it up. Just keep poking. You know, especially since now now that you have um, you know, some artillery, you can poke at stuff from a distance. You can basically say, like, hey, I'm going to park my units here. And basically my artillery is going to shell you. And if you come out to attack me, I have my medium tanks to defend with. Um, and if you don't attack me, you're just going to sit there and take damage. You know, so that's, of course, just value. It's just like pure value. Um, and if they attack you, you need to decide like, okay, can I sustain this fight? Is it going to be a good fight for me? If it's not, I can back up because all my units are mobile. I'm, I don't have any towers here. Um, you know, and even if you did have some light laser towers, like that's a small enough cost to you that, you know, sometimes retreating is just better. Um, but the idea is to lay siege so that you have some information. Um, alternatively, you could also send in a scout. Um, sc scouts have very good line of sight. Um, by scout, I mean the rascal for you. And that would just provide you with some information on what some of these dots are. Um, over here, it sounds like we've got some sureies going on. Um, this is something... Let's see. Who, oh no, that's yellow doing the look here. Um, so, if you ever see air units, communicate that. It's kind of a big deal. Um, you know, to, to know that they're sureies or not. Um, especially knowing which player it's coming from. So the fact that yellow has sureies means they have spent money on an air lab. Which means they can't have as many units on the fronts. And so, as long as you're doing your economy reasonably well, you should have more ground units. Your ground force should be stronger than them. So that should signal to you okay, this can't be all strong military units. And so there might be a good opportunity for me to attack. Um, you know, depending on what they actually have there. But the whole point is is, the, is to try, is to just like figure that out, um, get that information. Because the more information you have, you know, the, the more it can influence, you know, can you be aggressive? Do you need to be defensive? You know, um, do you need to go T2? Can you afford to go T2 without getting killed? Uh, th this is all extremely valuable information to have. And so fighting will get you that information. Um, as it is, Blue took out a couple of mechs back here. It's being denied by the shurikens. Um, but yeah, I think it's... it's um, you know, you also don't know, like in this particular case, they went air. Um, so you don't know if there's a bombing run coming on. Did they just get a couple of Shuris and then switching out? You know, are they switching out of having um, the air lab and going back into grounds? You know, it's just it's stuff that you don't necessarily know unless you're like looking at how many dots they have. Like, is there more and more dots coming down here? And as it is, since you put up the radar, I don't really see any extra dots. So what what you see is what you get. Um, it looks like one of these dots ends up being um, an agitator. Uh, you're trying to build an agitator, unfortunately it just gets picked off, so you lose a bit of metal. Um, and it looks like that signals to you to maybe engage, but you decide not to. Alright. So usually, when there's an agitator, that's a good signal to start attacking. Uh, because, um, basically agitators are a lot of metal. And what that means is they have less units, right? They sunk in a lot of money into this thing that can't move. So they have much less push potential, right? Um, and as it is, you can just move your units back. Um, what was I saying? Oh, so agitators, they have, like, um, you know, they cost a lot. So you think, like, okay, this is going to be a big, strong unit. I don't want to fight it. But actually, agitators are not very good defensively. They're actually much better aggressively. Um, so in fact, the position that you were putting that agitator, which was I think around here, 
Um, that is a better placement for an agitator than the one that they have. Um, the reason being is your agitator can kill a bunch of statics or whatever these dots are that aren't doing a lot of moving. Uh, you know, like there could be a lab there, there could be en energy producing buildings or whatever, like you can just take all that out with that. So that's a reasonable thing from you, but for them, all the, all the stuff that you have is mobile. You can just retreat back if you want to. Um, or you can engage because agitators are plasma shots. They can miss quite often, especially when they're shooting so far. Um, and they don't really do a, like a ton of damage. Like it, it'd be a long time for them to actually kill all these units out off. So engaging is sometimes a really good choice. Um, you know, and that goes back to the idea of if my opponents and I both make non-stop units, then we're equal on units, right? On on like um, str you know military strength in being able to push. Um, if one of you starts building a bunch of defenses, well now your push potential goes down, your defensive capabilities go up. Um, you know, and that might signal like, hey, you know, maybe it's time to go T2 or something like that. Um, you know, or maybe they have just less units and it's like, okay, what are they doing with that money? You know, that should be the big question. Um, you know, in this case, it looks like they, you know, they spent on an agitator, which is, you know, looked at as a defensive unit, but really more aggressive because they, they're better at sieging a spot than they are actually defending a spot. Um, so it'd be a, a reasonable signal to either A, if you constantly produce units to push, or a signal to get T2, because they can't push. Um, it looks like you're already on your way to getting T2. Um, one of the things I, I forgot to mention, because uh, I did watch this uh, prior, I know that you were building that agitator at the same time you're building this T2 lab, uh, which is not exactly ideal, because uh, both are very expensive. So an agitator, again, 1,300 metal. It's kind of a lot compared to any of these other structures, right? Um, it's kind of a lot compared to, um, you know, like your your mobile vehicle force. Like each tank is like 200 some when you're talking medium tanks. Um, this lab is 2,800. You know, so basically, you know, it's super expensive. And if you're trying to build something like an agitator, and you're trying to build something like a T2 lab, you're basically um, trying to produce stuff um, with without you know you're basically trying to spend metal you don't have because they're so expensive, and so because you don't have it, it slows both of those things down. So instead of having an agitator or a T2 lab, you now have two things that are building that are taking a while to build, and you just don't won't have either one for a little while. Um, so ideally, you'd be doing one or the other. Um, yeah, it's fine that you're going T2 here. Uh, personally, I think, you know, grabbing these should definitely take priority. It looks like you are doing that. Oh, bombing run. Um, but yeah, like I was saying before, your constructor was down here grabbing these mexes, and then these got picked off. So I would maybe suggest having a second constructor come down here to, to build these ASAP, because not having them is kind of a big deal. Um, anyways, let's talk about this bombing run. So this is another reason why it's unfortunate that your blue player didn't call out that there were shurikens. Um, you know, if they did, you know, that might signal to you like, hey, let's get some extra anti-air. Um, as it is, you do have one thistle, which is not really enough to take the, you know, to take any number of bombers out, unless they're like circling around. Um, and the position of this uh, thistle is kind of right in your base. Uh, if we look at the the range, the range extends basically around here. Uh, it's kind of hard to see, but yeah, I think it's basically this white circle. Um, so it can take, you know, it can do some damage as they're coming in, but the bombers, uh, I, you can see them dropping the bombs here, but they actually start dropping all the way out here, like in that kind of area, right? So, um, now that's not a lot of time for this thistle to connect some shots. So if they start bombing all the way from back here, there's a good chance they're going to successfully drop all those bombs before getting killed off. Um, doesn't matter how many sure or how many uh, thistles you have, 
you know, if you had like 10 thistles here, they're still going to be able to drop here. Um, I hope that makes sense. Um, so what you actually want to do, um, I mean, if you're going to have one thistle, like this is not a bad spot, but if you're going to set up a bunch of thistles, um, you know, you want to space them out and you want to have them um, towards where the bombers are probably going to come from. So you have one maybe here, maybe you have one over here, you have another one out here. Um, you know, that way they have a little bit more time to connect the shots before the bombers come in. Um, but yeah, realistically, like, bombers a lot of the time are still going to get their bombs off. Um, unless you overdo it with anti-air. Um, luckily for you, they didn't really get any damage at all done. They just kind of bombed a, a lab without killing it. So that's, you know, you're definitely going to survive through that. Uh, looks like they're turning towards blue, and blue might take some damage here. I don't really see any anti-air except for that one thistle here. Um, and now they're much more spaced out, so it's going to take a minute for them to get killed off here. Lots of missed shots. Yeah, bombers should definitely be paired with the scout to like see where the stuff is. Um, so not too bad. Could have been worse for sure. Um, at the same time, blue has lost some economy so that's a bit rough and it's kind of hard because right now you know as you're both getting t2 you kind of need a lot more energy and so it's kind of you know it's going to be a minute for blue to, to build back up again i guess all right so here you're building uh t2 guy which is good wind is super low uh 7.1 i mean it's not like like low 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 but like um, you know, compared to 25, it's it's pennies, right? You know, so, um, you know, th to fix this being so drastically different, the 5 and the 25, the minimum and the maximum, um, you want a steady source of income and you want a storage. The more wind you build, the more storage you, you should want to have um, to, like, just, you know, smooth it out, basically. Um, your... Solar collectors here do an okay job of that, but that's only 60 energy. That's really nothing. Um, so, like, ideally, if you don't have a geo, you want to do like an advanced solar just to have something to, to help smooth out. They're much more efficient than basic solars, but they're still pretty inefficient. So they're not, you know, they're not like great, but like it's something to smooth it out. Um, here, you also have the option of the geo. Uh, potentially, you have the option of doing titles if you had a, a uh, if you had built an amphibious um, constructor, you could do that. Uh, but the geo is the best best thing to get for that to smooth it out. Um, and if you were to do that, you know you want to build something like this many wins and then build it. And that way, you don't crash your your energy economy trying to build it. Um, I mean, I guess you can slow build it with less, but personally, I like to assist it and try to build it quickly so that I can benefit from it faster. Um, but yeah, when you do that, um, you can start reclaiming some of these basic solars and just put that money into um, other forms of economy. Um, or I should say, you know, like as you build up more wins, reclaim any solars that you have because they're generally much more efficient. Um, you know, that's you know basically any time you're up on energy, that's a good time to maybe think about reclaiming the the solar to get more metal back. Um, all right, so here I see you are reacting. You're building the T2 two max. Um, let's see who has that queued up. Okay, so it looks like the commander has this queued up after this guy here. Yeah, so generally speaking, after you get a T2 lab, your first priority should be to upgrade the mexes. Um, and to do that, um, I mean, it kind of depends on how much energy you're getting. Like at the moment, you're very low on energy. The wind is at the minimum it can be. Um, so you want to fix this issue ASAP because this is an issue, especially with T2 units are, are much more expensive. You know, 10,000 energy for a Tiger and you're only getting 200. So this is like a big deficit. So you want to remedy that ASAP. Um, but besides that, generally speaking, um, once you get your T2 constructor out, you don't really want to be building units yet. 
you want to put as much resources into upgrading your resources because T2 mexes generate four times the amount um, for a cost, of course. They do cost quite a bit. So you want to put more resources towards generating more resources because that is a, a pretty sizable boon uh, to have them upgraded. And by building units, you're basically slowing down your progression into um, you know, making your economy stronger. Um, yeah, real, realistically speaking, it's it's like you don't really want these units until you have T2 economy. Um, you know, so you can do things like anticipate building this max, anticipate having this lab finished, and start adding on some wind ahead of time. Because um, wind is so good on this map, that's a good choice. If wind is low on the map and you don't have a geo, uh, you can build some extra uh, advanced solars. Um, if something happens and you like lost a bunch of energy or something like that, um, or if you want to be more efficient about it and have a little bit of time, you can do things like like build up you know a couple of your mexes and then once they're done, build a fusion. Um, but you want to be careful because a fusion is rather expensive. It's a big investment. Uh, the mexes are a big investment, but not nearly as much as the fusion. Uh, mexes are, of course, much more. Fu more blah, blah, blah. It's much more, much better to get the me mexes upgraded. Um, you know, it's it's much more important to get the mexes upgraded than the fusion. Uh, but to do that efficiently, what you actually want to do is instead of having this lab, you can even do things like reclaim the lab to get all that metal back. You get 100% back uh, reclaiming something that's living. You know, so to re if you were to reclaim this lab, you get the full 2,800 metal back. Um, uh, if you were to do that, make notes that you don't have the storage for that metal. So you actually want to build a metal storage to do that. Um, so after, you know, basically what you would want to do is, you know, you get the T2 lab, you produce your, your construction vehicle, your advanced construction vehicle, and then with one of your T1 guys, you know, whether it be a commander or a you know, just a regular vehicle or whatever. Um, you know, just build that metal storage, and that'll give you 3,000 extra storage, to, and that allows you to then afterwards reclaim the lab um, after the the uh, constructor's done. And then you can like try to hard boost your your mexes by putting more build power into getting them up faster. Um, and if you wanted the fusion, you want to get the fusion before you rebuild the T2 lab. Uh, but basically, that's just like a way to to um, kind of micro your macro so that you get your mexes and things faster. Um, but again, in this particular situation, your energy is so low that, yeah, you want to be building some more wind turbines, especially since wind is ridiculous on this map. It's way better than a fusion. Um, you know, so lots of wins is great. Um, the geo is still good to have. Like ge geos are even more efficient than this crazy wind. Um, I think the winds like average needs to be somewhere around 25-ish for it to be as strong as a geo. Um, just to put that into perspective, the average here is 18. So it, it's you know wind is great, but the geo is still better. Is essentially what that means. All right, so you're upgrading your mexes. Um, you're still producing out of this lab, um, but ideally these guys should probably be assisting this guy, unless you're like, you know, in immediate danger. Um, you know, you want to prioritize that because the faster you get these up, the more metal income that you have to spend towards units, and it'll, you'll just have a lot more units that way. All right, so three tigers. Tigers are a reasonable thing here. Um, yeah, I mean, Tigers are about the same efficiency as like a medium tank. Um, like they don't really have that much more DPS than a medium tank, but they have a lot more hit points. So that gives them much more sustain to like attack and retreat with or attack and run through a defense or something like that. Okay. Um, arguably here, it'd be a little bit better to have things like Quakers, because with the Quakers you can shell this. 
Um, as, you know, same logic as the artillery. You, you can park some tanks, um, you know, with your artillery shell in this place. You know, Quakers have a much longer range than regular artillery. Uh, you know, same with Mausers, by the way. Uh, but essentially, like with an artillery and medium tanks, you'd want to park them here to shell these units. Um, whereas a Quaker, you can set all the way back here and sh still shell the same spot. Um, and that, you know, you, and you have these medium tanks still to like pr help protect them. You know, so that would put on some pressure um, on your opponent. Um, actually, because we like have no idea, um, I just want to, I guess, point out what your opponent has. So I'm going to take off your player view. Uh, so this whole time, this is what your opponents had to defend with, um, which is just eight incisors, a commander, uh, three light laser towers that you know of, and this agitator. So all these extra dots are actually just production. These actually do nothing for them defensively. So there's actually a lot of opportunity here to do some damage, um, which means they had much more opportunity to greed. Um, so looking at their base, they actually have a lot of T2 mexes upgraded already. Uh, they have the you know the T2 labs done. It can produce whatever they want. They have an air lab that's pr been producing some stuff, and they have the advanced geo. So their energy is in a great spot. Their metals in a good spot. Um, all because they got away with not having as much here. Uh, so that's why it's so important to check and so important to like poke, you know, see if you can do damage. If you can, great, then, you know, do that damage. If not, then you at least know that you can't. And that means that they're kind of, um, you know, they're kept in check. Their greed is kept in check, basically. Um, you know, so that's kind of a big deal. Um, also note that there's some amphibious units here that red, I guess, is just using defensively, but these could actually just roll right through here into either of your bases. Um, so yeah, uh, that just goes back to what I was saying initially about like where amphibious units can move up. You know, there's all these coasts that potentially could see some amphibious play. So just having a radar in the water so that there's sonar can help a lot. Um, same with back here, by the way, but um, or at the, at the very least, having you know maybe a couple of of light laser t uh, towers back here, so that if something comes through, then um, at least it'll take some damage, and you can maybe have some time to respond as those towers get killed off. Um, anyways, back to your view. Whoops, that's not your view. Got your guys coming out. Um, so you added on your mechs as you're prioritizing that. Your en energy is not great, but at the same time, it's enough for you to upgrade your mechs. So like that's kind of okay, but that should be on the back in the back of your mind. And now that the winds dips down, now you're kind of screwed again. Um, you know, again, this is where a geo would have helped a lot. Um, and you know, you could build a geo with a T1 constructor. Um, T1 geos, they're not like crazy efficient, but I mean, they, uh, actually, I mean, they are crazy efficient, but they're not as efficient as a T2, the T2 version, um, the advanced geothermal. Uh, just to put that in perspective, an advanced geothermal produces 1,250 energy, and a fusion produces 1,100. So they produce more energy than a fusion, and if you see the price here, they cost a third of the metal. So they're like a fusion but much, much cheaper. So they're actually really, really strong. Um, and I would say at this point, like even if your energy was in a good spot, after you get like these three mexes, is a reasonable time to get that that's, uh, advanced geo um, to upgrade your basic into an advanced. Um, in terms of timing of when to get the basic one, I th actually, I think I covered that already when I talked about, I, I said like maybe about that much wind. Uh, so I, I guess I'll go over that again. Um, but yeah. All right, moving on. Um, yeah, ba basically you're already like super behind your opponent because they just don't have that much to defend with here. They, they're basically scaring you off with not much. 
Wait, what? Oh, the, oh, okay. I thought it was this bigger radius, but it's actually this shorter radius here. Um, so if you move this guy up, actually, I think you probably have a couple. No? Just the one? Okay. Well, if you move this guy up, he could at least start shelling the place. Um, having, I, I would say maybe have more like a handful of them. Because you have plenty of medium tanks and stuff to, to help defend them. Um, this agitator, not useful anymore. Um, sure, it has more range than, than the the Quaker, but it does um, it doesn't do that much damage. It's 650 per, per burst, uh, which means its DPS is only 86 compared to the Quaker. Actually, it has I guess the Quaker has less DPS, but it is much cheaper. Um, so I don't really recommend this. You know, having something mobile is pretty valuable. Um, and just to compare the cost, the Quaker is only 400, whereas this thing again is 1300. So this thing is four or uh, three times the cost as a Quaker. So you could have three Quakers, and the Quakers have the benefit of being able to uh, like fall back if something happens. Oh, unfortunately, Yellows has sent some Tigers down here, applied some extra pressure to Blue, who is already having trouble because of the bombers. Um, so that kind of goes back to, I guess, everything I've been talking about with like poking and being aggressive against Yellow. Uh, because, you know, early earlier on, Yellow got those bombers in, did some damage to Blue. And that sets Blue back. Um, you know, Blue was aggressive and, and killed some of the mechs here, but the the Shurikens, um, you know, took out those tanks pretty quickly. And tanks are a lot more expensive than mechs, right? So the fact that the Shuris got in there, stunned the units, made it so that any kind of trade against those tanks was you know, a perfect trade of you're getting it, you're killing those tanks for free, essentially. So basically it was trading those tanks for those mexes. So, it, you know, not a great value for blue. Um, and then, yeah, getting bombs and, and, you know, now getting pushed by a couple of yellow units as well as these red units. Um, so blue's kind of hurting a lot because you didn't keep this player's uh, economy in check. Uh, it looks like you're, you're, You've decided to here, knowing that yellow has some units stationed here. So that's the correct line of thoughts. Um, it's just like doing that with, uh, you know, I guess just doing that for for intel, even if yellow's not down there attacking. Um, yeah, and and I mean here you can keep going. I mean, I, I okay, you are keep keeping on going. You might have like returned to your base to like. Do some macro before continuing on. That's perfectly fine. Uh, but it's good that you're being aggressive here. Is the bottom line. Um, unfortunately, their economy is quite a bit stronger. So even though you had some tanks built up, Yellow is able to like push you back, but just like building tanks at a fa much faster rate. Um, uh, looking at your unit queue. Okay, so this is a mistake, first and foremost. Um, so looking at this, I feel like you probably did this because you, you, you know, that's kind of like a normal thing to do is to like have a uh, constructor queued up with your units. But that's a normal thing for T1. Um, you know, so the T1 constructors can help boost the lab. Um, that's a reasonable thing to do if there's a lot of metal nodes and things for those constructors to do besides um, helping the lab. Um, the most efficient way to assist the lab and the things around your base is always going to be a construction turret. And so ideally you want to uh, have more construction turrets than T1 constructors, even in the T1 phase, um, if it's just for assisting. Now in the T2 phase, these T2 constructors are much more expensive for how much build power they have. I mean, sure they have 250 build power, but if they're just going to sit there assisting the lab, it should definitely be um, construction turrets because um, for 250 build power, you're, they cost 580 metal, whereas a construction turret costs only 210 metal and provide 100 build power. Um, so it's just like a bit more reasonable, and it means that you're not producing um, non-combat units out of this this lab. You want to produce useful units out of this lab. Um, Alright, so the other thing I want to point out here is the negotiator. 
Um, now, negotiators are very good against static. But you just lost a bunch of units here. So you don't really have a lot of things to defend them with. And they are awful. They are very, very bad to have in a straight up fight like this. Uh, where tanks can just roll up on them. Now, if there was like, say, like, say this part of the terrain was like this high ground spot where you could like drive your negotiators up here and just park them here and they're like relatively safe because of the cliff, then they can reasonably be used to like siege this, the place from afar. But as it is like sending them up here, you know, they'll basically, um, you know, they're going to be very vulnerable uh, just coming up here. Especially since you don't have too many tanks left up here. And because um, in this like really close combat kind of battle, those shots, even if they connect on an enemy, those shots are right by your, your own units and your own units are going to take friendly fire. Um, you know, the, the, the attack itself, or I should say, um, you know, projectiles and bar do not care if they're your units or your opponent's units. If they hit your unit, they do full damage. Uh, so it's, it's kind of a big deal. Because having this guy here is basically going to mean um, he's going to automatically fire on these enemy units, which are right next to your units. And by the time that missile lands, the enemy unit might not even be there. And your unit could still be there. So like it's just a very dangerous thing to, to have going on here. Um, by the way, this... As well as like all that metal that was up here, is a sizable reclaim field. Um, in total, right now, and this is after, um, this is after Yellow has reclaimed a lot of what was up here already. Um, this is 5.5 um, thousand metal, right? And uh, if, if you remember, I don't, I don't know if I explained this in this video actually, but basically every 100 metal that you're denying your opponent is 100 metal that you're getting and 100 metal that they're not getting. So that means uh, it's actually like a difference of 200 metal. So 5.5 thousand metal here is really, you know, 11,000 metal difference if you had, if you were able to get the entire reclaim field. Um, and now it's even bigger. Uh, so, okay, so it's good that you're reclaiming the stuff here. Um, yeah, ideally, you want to get as many units up here to fight for this, essentially. Uh, which is going to be hard just because yellow has a bigger economy. But I just say that as a general thing. Um, you know, to try to fight for the, the reclaim field. Um, maybe get some more builders up there or something like that. Um, another option that you have is you can build a T1 lab again and get some res bots. Um, you know, get some res bots to... to quickly reclaim you know they're they're relatively cheap for 200 reclaim power um you know it's, it's much better than using a constructor um the negotiator is picked off um and the enemy commander's here so yeah okay well the enemy that wasn't really a a great choice by the uh opponent but yeah So it's one commander to one commander, so that's another thing to keep in mind is the wind condition. You don't know where the enemy commander is, but if you ever like got eyes on it, it'd be like, okay, maybe there's a play where we can, we can gun down that commander instead of winning outright with units. Uh, yeah, so here, I mean, your metal income's pretty, you know, it's much better here. You've built up a lot more wind with a lot more queued. The geo would help a uh, lot right now. Um, but yeah, all these mechs back here should ideally be upgraded as well. Um, and you just have all these like constructors sitting here, so like you could actually just go out and grab those. Yeah, yellow has gotten a lot of the reclaim that was here, and that means. You know, not only are you dealing with the fact that he has a stronger economy because he, he uh, like greeted for it, now you're dealing with the fact that there's metal reclaim that they're getting um, up here. So you just want to be careful with that. When you, when you assault an enemy base, 
um, especially in like the T2 phase, you want to bring up some res bots with you and just use the res bots to reclaim anything that dies. Um, you can also do things like repair your troops, you know, um, just to get more value out of them. And it's just like adds a lot of value to your, your front line there. Okay, so this is unfortunate. This is basically over now because they have T3 and some strong C2 units come down here. And all you really have is like, you know, so many T2 units, so it's it's, it's gonna be rough. Um, Banishers, by the way, I just saw that one like run in here. Um, they're more of like a backline kind of unit. You want to have them behind the, the Tigers. Um, same thing with the Negotiator. You want them like pretty far back. Um, so I would suggest if you're not doing this, I would suggest having things like bulls and tigers and uh, you know frontline units on one auto group and then having things with more range or you know having things with bigger range on a second auto group um, and that might include your artillery but if you're really fancy you could have a third auto group with your things like artillery and negotiators and and stuff like that so that they're even further behind um, so thinking about the core vehicles you know the things on the on the first auto group would be like you know your tigers. Things on your second auto group would be things like banishers, and then things behind those guys would be like negotiators or quakers. Uh, and that way you're just kind of set up for like the tanky stuff is in the front, the stuff with really long range that dies quickly is in the back, and you know you can kind of like play around with that. But yeah, the game's over. Um, Let's see, is there any final notes I really want to go over? I mean, I guess just to make a summary of all this for you, um, I think this is probably a longer video, but, um, you know, firstly, take a look at the map. Um, you know, make note of some of the map features, make note of like where the wind, you know, what the wind is, what the, uh, you know, where the mexes are, you know, good spots to defend some like natural chokey points. Um, you know, making it a goal to like get there and secure that so that the rest of your base is secure. Um, uh, yeah, just like, you know, the main thing that I want you to, to pay attention to is just like trying to uh, attack your opponent. You don't have to sit there and just like fight all day long, um, but to like periodically poke at them, see what they have and kind of keep them in check. And that should give you the information to to say like um, you know like their defenses are weak. Let me just like keep on getting units and just roll them, or their defenses are strong. Let me um, you know if if they have a lot of units, you can say okay, I need to you know continue to make units or defenses. Um, if they have a lot of defenses, you can say things like. Um, like, oh, that's a lot of pork. I don't really want to assault that, but I know that that stuff is static, so it can't really come and attack my base. So that means I can, you know, I have more opportunity to do things like going T2 or greeting for, you know, a bigger economy or something like that. Um, you know, and so that's the main focus that I think would benefit you um, looking at this game. Uh, but yeah, secondly, just getting your, your T2 economy going a little bit stronger. Um, you didn't quite have enough energy to really pull that off, and so when the wind dipped down, you kind of got a little screwed. Um, so the geo is kind of really important in that particular instance. Um, but yeah, I went into a lot of detail for this review, uh, so um, you know, take some notes or whatever you got to do to, uh, you know, start making some improvements. But you know, doing that stuff will certainly um, you know, win you a lot more games. Um, so I hope you learn something from all that. Um, but yeah, that does it for me. Uh, if you have any questions or anything, let me know. And uh, yeah, I'm signing off, so good luck.